Fall Guys, one of the most popular games in the world, two years ago, finally made its way to the Nintendo Switch and Xbox consoles this week, while also going free to play on all platforms. So I want to talk about this shift, uh, specifically focusing on the new Switch version, if it was worth the wait, and did this take them too long? Many meme on this game today saying it's dead. Uh, regardless of its current popularity, this is definitely an attempt to boost those player numbers, right? I mean, you don't add more platforms and simultaneously make your game free to play if you're not really hoping to bump up those player numbers. So how is the game overall and is it too little too late? Did they miss their big opportunity to make big money on this Switch version? For those of you who somehow aren't aware, Fall Guys is basically most extreme elimination challenge the game. You get matched up with 60 other players and play against them through a series of obstacle courses and mini games. Each round people get eliminated until one person is left standing. It has a very lighthearted, wacky nature as your goofy little chub gets smacked around by various hazards as you desperately push your way towards the finish line. Now I've actually never played this game myself uh, obviously, I saw it a bunch when it was at the height of its popularity. I mean, like everyone and their mother was streaming it when it first came out. It's just one of those things that never gripped me. But I've got to admit, I've had quite a bit of fun trying this game out on the Switch. Now, I want to note that there were a ton of issues when the game first went live yesterday at the time of this recording. Uh, people couldn't get into games. They were left hanging in the loading screens, getting kicked, you know, disconnected. It was a whole thing. Myself, I didn't play the game until later in the evening, and I've got to be honest, I had very few issues. I played quite a bit and only had like one instance where I kind of got trapped in like trying to leave a game after I was eliminated and the menu was just leaving me there kind of hanging and I had to close the full game out and restart it. With it being 100% online, this could have been an absolute disaster. Once more, I guess it kind of was when it went live, but uh, it's definitely a lot better now. I'm guessing, you know, it was just so many people hitting those servers with it, you know, being new, being free to play. That's probably a lot of people coming in at once. If you had those problems and gave up, I would definitely take another crack at it. The Switch version does have one glaring issue, though, in my opinion, and it is more in the performance department. The movement of other players looks really janky. Oftentimes, I saw characters just like stop animating like their floating body was just moving around in front of me, uh, which that may be more of a, an internet connection thing, but like the frame rate they animate at it is pretty rough. It's not game breaking, but it does take a bit getting used to. It's kind of like in a lot of games, you know, when there's characters in that far in the distance, they have like less frames of animation. It's that kind of deal, but like right in front of your face, kind of irritating. Beyond that, though, uh, yeah, the game I still think is a lot of fun, super easy to pick up and play. Uh, you pretty much just move and jump. Uh, sometimes you gotta grip stuff, but that's more so for trolling people. It's nearly impossible to not bust out laughing while playing this game. Uh, that's why it became so popular with like streamers when it launched. I remember just in the time I was playing it, there was an instance where I was like trapped between these spinning bumpers. I mean, like, you'd think I was magnetized to those damn things with how I was just repeatedly running right into them. My guy just ragged out, flying, gets up, goes right back into it. And I just lost it sitting there by myself. Just started completely cracking up. And I really like the psychological angle of some of the games, too. Like, the one where there's the trap platform tiles. And you gotta move across the stage just guessing which platforms you can use. And some of them will stay and some of them will drop off. You end up in sort of a squid game type scenario with everyone just trying to get other people to make the mistakes so they can just follow along the good path. Also, something I like about this type of game more than other elimination style games like your battle royales, for instance, you know, your Fortnite's Warzone, stuff like that, is that because it pushes the pace so hard, like these rounds are very quick. And I guess also the chaotic nature as well kind of helps this. You don't really get bent out of shape after losing, even if you make it to like the very end. Like because things move so fast, it doesn't feel like as big of a deal 
if you lose and have to, you know, hop into a new game where, like, you know, if you're one of the last five people in, say, you know, a full Fortnite game, losing that feels like a big L. You may feel like you have to take a break before getting back into it. I will admit completely failing to grab the crown because you're a filthy casual who doesn't know what they're doing at the very end and losing because of it uh, isn't that easy. But yeah, overall, yeah, the more lighthearted nature makes it uh, easier to move on. And one of the positives about getting this game after it has been out for so long on other platforms is you are getting it with all the updates it's received throughout the years. So there are a lot of match types. Uh, there's some that are more minigame-esque like volleyball, courses with weather effects like ice and snow that really change things up. So many different wind conditions. I remember there was like uh, one where you had to stay in a zone for a certain amount of time. Like there was a bunch of hazards in that hitting you out and then it would restart you at the beginning and it was like you were trying to spend a certain amount of seconds in the zone and I didn't even like realize what I was doing <laughs> until it was almost over. So yeah, with it being out for a while in other places, there's a, a good variety in the gameplay options. Now with the game moving to free to play, we do have to take a look at how it is being monetized. And this game, it's, it's about as good as it gets in that department. Everything in the shop is purely cosmetic. Nothing in terms of gameplay is locked behind a paywall. And the costumes in that that you get, I think are, are pretty cool and you know decently priced. Actually, being a big Godzilla fan, that Mecha Godzilla costume on the Battle Pass is kind of enticing. Actually, with the Battle Pass, a nice thing too is some of the unlocks include the paid currency. Uh, much of it is locked behind the paid tier of the Battle Pass. Like, you don't get a lot of the paid currency in the free tier. But it's one of those situations where it's like if you choose to buy the paid Battle Pass, that if you level it up to the end, You'll get so much currency that just that way it basically pays for itself and you either have enough or close to enough to buy into the next battle pass without paying for it. And the levels in the battle pass unlock pretty damn fast. I mean, I'm already over level 10, I think, just in, in a one play session. So it probably won't be hard for people who get really into the game to unlock stuff. So overall, I think there are a lot of positives here. But the question still remains, is this too little too late? I think it's a bit yes and no. In terms of what they are doing right now, I don't think there is a better way to go about this release. Going free to play is definitely the way with this type of game. I'm sure it's not doing crazy sales anymore since it's not as popular and many already bought it. This way you can get new people in easily as well as get people who already bought it on PC or PlayStation to jump in with these other versions. Maybe you bought it on PC, but you want to try it out on Switch. This way you get to do that without having to like buy the game again or anything. So I'm sure you're going to get a solid player spike out of this, both in new and returning players. And I hope they do well. I hope people have fun with this game. But uh, yeah, at the same time, I think it has mostly run its course. While I had fun with what I played, it's not something I'm going to you know, really get sucked into. And I think that'll be the case for most people as well. One of those games where you pretty much get it out of your system after a week or so of playing it. And, you know, maybe you come back to it every now and then after that. I don't think this is like going to propel it back to its old heights. Not that it needs to, but I do think it taking so long to get this game on other platforms was a big miss. I kind of put this in a similar category as Overwatch on Switch. I don't think it's nearly as bad, mind you. And I think they're doing a lot of smarter stuff like with this free to play deal but it is kind of similar with overwatch you know that game was at its peak popularity when the switch was still new and every time i asked people like what games they wanted to see come over to the switch overwatch was always spammed in my comments consistently and it did come years later and by that time pretty much no one cared i mean it was it took too long and this isn't me trying to hate on this game or even hate on Overwatch. This is just the nature of these multiplayer games. Even if they're super popular, you're only going to have a set time frame that you're in that peak popularity before the next thing comes along and people move on to that. And it's like you really need to strike while the iron's hot. Once more, I think they're doing things much smarter with Fall Guys going free to play in that. But I can't help but think 
if this was more of a priority at the start, uh, rather than feeling more like an attempt to get some of that hype back, if this dropped at least closer to when the game was the talk of the town, I'm not saying this is something that, you know, needed to be on the Nintendo Switch right away day one, but I think it would have made a much bigger impact and probably sold pretty well. And you still could have sold this game on the Switch back then and eventually done this transition to free to play just the same and just made way more money all around. Once again, I'm not trying to hate on it, but I do think this is another case where the Switch and its massive player base should have been better prioritized early on. Still better late than never, and obviously with the game being free to play, if you feel like checking it out, if you've never played it before, or you know maybe you just haven't played it in a long time, you're thinking about coming back to it, you're looking at this gameplay saying, eh, you know, I, maybe I'll boot it up on my Switch. It's free, so you may as well try it, and I'm sure you'll have at least some fun with it. Anyway, with that, this video's a wrap. Let me know your thoughts on Fall Guys coming to the Nintendo Switch in the comments. Are you playing it? What has your experience with it been like? Were you one of the people struggling to get in when it first launched? And do you think this release is too little too late for it to make much of an impact on the game's popularity? As always, I'm the Shy Guy, Johnny Zakari, and thanks for watching.